Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. I've got a lot of friends who are very creative people, who make music, who make movies, who make visual art, who are writers. Uh, they, they make all sorts of utterly fantastic things. They put themselves out there like crazy. Uh, they, they get all sorts of criticism uh, from doing that. Some good, some bad. It uh, comes in all flavors. And that's one of the things that puts me doing this vlog uh, outside of my comfort zone. I, I don't mind criticism myself, uh, but it's trickier when it would be about something that has my face directly connected with it. Uh, writing, I can separate myself from relatively easily. The website design is absolutely no problem to separate myself from. I barely call what I do art uh, when it comes to that. Uh, it's mostly just technical uh, work for me. It's, it's not something that I consider artistic. But everyone who puts stuff out there uh, invites criticism of some sort. Uh, that, that's the hazard of putting stuff out there. That is the price we pay in addition to the time and effort that it takes to create these things. Once something we do is out in the world, we've lost a lot of control over it. And one of those things that, that comes back, and one of the things that artists, especially those who are going to school, for art, or who are enlisting the help of a mentor of some sort, uh, they have to really get used to sometimes very harsh criticism of stuff they have put blood, sweat, and tears and hours of their lives into. One of the best lessons that I ever learned about how to deal with that, about how it really works, uh, was the simple statement that you are not your art. And I've heard it from lots and lots of places over the years. And that's important to remember when dealing with criticism. One of the most recent places uh, I heard about it was uh, in this book, uh, Brick by Brick, uh, by Stephen uh, McCraney. Uh, he's a artist. He has a uh, webcomic that he puts up that he collected uh, into this book. Uh, and I highly recommend this book. It is a beautiful, uh, wonderfully well done essay uh, and, and instruction book uh, on everything that goes into creating and how the internal process works as much as the, the external one. Uh, he has most of it uh, also up on his website, which I'll put a link to uh, in the description, uh, spe specifically to his bit called You Are Not Your Art. Uh, he says some stuff very, very well in there that I am not going to repeat uh, because he's already done it and done it fantastically. But I am going to build on that idea of you are not your art by saying you are not your art, but, but your art is a reflection of who you are. And this is where things get complicated. Because while it's easy enough to say and eventually accept the fact that there are going to be people who don't like your art, it's not so easy to keep that separation complete, where you can think that people who don't like your art may still like you as a person, because when your art gets criticized, it feels very often like it's you being criticized. And sometimes it is because some critics are dicks and they go out of their way to attack the artist as much as the art. I see that a lot in movie and television reviews. Uh, and when I do my reviews, I try very hard not to do that. I think it cheapens the entire review uh, genre when you see a bad movie and all you talk about is how horrible the filmmakers must be. Not in any technical sense, but in a very human sense. Or you read a piece of bad writing and all you can talk about is 
what an awful person that writer must be for having put something like this out. Uh, it's something that we do. It's something that creative people, uh, those who actually create and put stuff out there, have to deal with. And because we connect so much with what we create, and because there is no question that what we create is a reflection of who we are, it gets very difficult to maintain and believe deep down that sort of separation. And that's where mastery of the arts comes in. Because what differentiates an amateur from an expert, aside from the amount of time they have spent on their craft, is the depth of their creations. Now, that's not saying that you've created a world that, that you have documented explicitly 5,000 years of history and royal houses that go back 15 generations with all of your third cousins in some writer's Bible somewhere with explicit notes on what this character looks like and what that character looks like and reference images. That's not depth. That's details. That's technical stuff. What depth provides is depth provides a way for the readers to get something more than just the surface information out of your creation. You can be completely technically amazed by a fantastic craftsman who, who creates a piece of art. The technical aspects of that art may be absolutely perfect. The painting may look exactly like a photograph. A photograph may be an exact representation of what was there in that moment. A piece of writing may be an exact, detailed, perfect account of everything that went on in that scene. But that's not depth. That's recording. That's a direct reflection. It's like a mirror. What we create is a mirror of who we are. And the only way mirrors get really interesting is if they have depth. Now your classic mirror is just a flat plane and it reflects back exactly what is in front of it. There is no interpretation. There is no insight. There is only what is. Now you take a mirror in a fun house a mirror that distorts and contorts and twists and changes what is reflected back. And those, those all have depth. They have curves in them. They're bent. They are placed against each other so they reflect their reflections and combine them in interesting and different and unique ways. And it's the same with what we create, with art. That's what the depth is. The depth is the distortion of the perfect reflection of reality. That's what makes art worthwhile, is the interpretation, the understanding, the insight that goes into it, and that can be brought out of it. In a work of fiction, what makes something better than average, better than just a report of what happened, is getting inside those characters and having them express their particular twists on the objective reality. That's what makes us as people more interesting and unique, is that we all have our own filters that objective reality goes through. And when we repeat back what we think we're seeing, it doesn't always match with what other people have seen. And that's kind of an important detail. Uh, that, that's what creates new ideas. That's what helps us bridge misunderstandings and fill in our own blind spots because we don't see everything. I can't see what's immediately behind me. 
I can't see what's behind that wall over there. But someone who's standing over there can. And it's not until we start exchanging information and being able to accept that our view, our immediate flat reflection, isn't all that there is. Then we get depth. And our depth as creators increases as we dig deeper into ourselves. If you are afraid to face yourself, to look in the dark corners of yourself, of your mind, of your heart, of your spirit, then your art is limited. Your art is never deeper than you are. Sure, there may be people who are willing to read more into it, especially if you are a skilled writer. You may be able to write something completely flat that has enough hints in it, enough vagueness in it, that allows people to project their own interpretations, to reflect their own depths. But that is not depth of art. That is a mirror still. And it is up to the readers, the consumers of the art, to add that depth. I do it all the time with bad TV shows and movies, where I come up with a backstory that is infinitely better than anything in the movie. And sometimes that leads to more enjoyment of the movie. Other times, not so much. It's just frustrating. So, as a creator, as an artist, it's your duty to know yourself and be able to turn your craft, to turn your creation into a funhouse mirror where it doesn't reflect reality exactly. It reflects a view of reality that someone else hasn't necessarily seen before. A view of reality that you may not even believe yourself. Because that adds depth. It adds nuance. It adds curves. And it adds unexpected turns. And it adds the potential for insight. And that's what makes great art. Uh, I, there's more I could say on uh, this sort of topic. Uh, th there's a whole realm of personal development that gets tied into this. Uh, looking at your life as a narrative and being able to dig through uh, everything. You treat yourself as a character. and oh, I'll talk about that more in, in later vlogs. But for now, just remember, you are not your art. But your art is a reflection of who you are. And if you can add more depth to yourself, you can add more depth and nuance to your art. That's it for today. Uh, if you like what you hear, uh, feel free to hit the like button. If you've got something else to say on it, uh, give me a comment down below. We'll get a discussion going, uh, get different points of view in. Uh, if there's someone else out there who uh, you think would be interested in hearing this, share this with them. Uh, and uh, feel free to subscribe so you can get notified every time I put myself out there in one of these. I welcome your criticism. Uh, I won't take it personally, as long as you don't personally attack me. I'm Kier. That's it for today. I guess I'll see you tomorrow.